Hi guys, Johnny from onestepforward.com uh, and I'm gonna answer a few questions from the team at Inflow. So let's give it a crack. First, how did I come up with the idea to row the Atlantic? Um, it's kind of a long story, but a few years ago, after I finished my every country in the world trip, which was a whole nother story, um, I was running an ultra marathon through the Sahara Desert, 250 miles or kilometers through the Sahara in Morocco. And anyway, um, each night you sleep rough and the next morning you run another 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers or whatever. And one of the days <clears throat> when I was running in the, in the desert, I met an English guy who was a former Marine and he told me he had rowed across the Atlantic. So I was like, whoa, that's so cool. Um, and he told me some people to contact and a Facebook group to join. And in that group, people were always talking about rowing the Atlantic, about two, you know, about 500 people I think have done it in history. So then I, I was always reading all the articles and stuff about people rowing across the Atlantic. And then last year in kind of October, 2020, a team who was gonna row the Atlantic needed two more team members. And they just said, does anyone wanna come and row the Atlantic? And it was COVID and I was in Thailand where, uh, where I live and lockdown was on and I thought, I'm gonna do this. So I just applied, signed up. And six weeks later, I was doing a sea survival course um, in the south of England, I flew back for it. And then we went the next month. So all, ha all happened really quickly. Um, and actually for me personally, it was kind of risky because I can't really swim and I've got no rowing experience, no boat experience. So yeah, it all happened really quickly. And then I left and now here I am on the other side, still alive, so it's okay. What reactions did I get at first? Support or criticism? Hmm. So I'm engaged, um, technically married actually, but we haven't had the ceremony yet uh, because of COVID. And actually I got married legally um, in Thailand two weeks before I left to go do the sea survival course in England. So I got married, then then I told my wife um, that I had applied to do this thing and had been accepted and then two weeks later I left and that was six months ago and because of COVID I haven't been back. So that's not so cool. So that didn't go down well. Also my the wedding had been postponed a couple of times the rescheduled time was gonna be during the time that I was rowing, so we've had to postpone it again. So that's been really tough for me and my family. But my other family, my mom, who I'm very close to, and my sister and stuff, they supported it because they're so used to me climbing mountains or ultra marathons or cycling across country. So it's just another thing for them to roll their eyes at and watch me hurt myself doing. What was the hardest thing to overcome on the ocean? Have you had any dangerous moments when you were scared? For me, the hardest thing on the ocean was um, the solitude, or let's say, feeling really claustrophobic. Because although like the whole ocean is around you, you're so trapped. You can't see anyone you love, you can't do anything you want, you can't eat anything that you like. You're just stuck, and the space, the best way to describe it is like, if you think about your kitchen table or your dining table in your house, we had two people living under that table. So, for two months so you can't stand up or anything and I'm not sure if I explained but to row across the Atlantic it takes two months right and during those two months obviously there's 24 hours a day and there's four people that do it in our team on the little boat and two people are rowing for two hours and then you rest for two hours and then you row for two hours and you rest for two hours and when you're rowing the other two are resting and when they're rowing, you're resting. So you row for 12 hours a day, two hours on, two hours off throughout the entire 24 hour period of the day. And you do that seven days a week for seven or eight weeks. So it's pretty tough. So the hardest thing was just being so stuck and feeling like I've worked so hard through my blog and everything to create this life of freedom. And then crazily I had signed up for something that stripped all that freedom away. So that was really tough. And was I scared? I don't know. Like. There was big waves, sometimes the waves were the size of two or three story buildings and you're in this little boat going up and down and twice I got hit by a wave on the side and the boat was like teetering over and I thought I was gonna capsize but we didn't so here I am. How long did you prepare for the experience? Well, like I mentioned, 
very little. I had just run an ultra marathon in Thailand from Chiang Mai to Chiang Rai in the north of Thailand. It's 200 kilometers. And that took me 50 hours or something, two days straight shot. So I had been training for that. So I was quite fit from a cardio perspective, but I've never rode before. And from signing up, from applying for the row to getting selected for the row to flying to England for the sea survival course was only a few weeks. So I didn't, I only had a few weeks to prepare. And because I'd never rowed, I just went and found a gym in Bangkok in Thailand where I was with a row machine. And then I just used a row machine for a few hours every day. And that's the only preparation I could do. So I wasn't that prepared, but I was fit from the ultra marathon that I'd just done. So yeah, I kind of just threw myself into it. <clears throat> After two, uh, months, uh, you're isolated with just three people. Do you think it'd be even harder if you're back in a social life rather than being other? Oh. Yeah, I mean, doing that expedition across the ocean, uh, there was only four of us, like I said, so it was tough. Obviously, you only speak to those people. You don't really have an internet connection or anything like that. So there's just four people. And actually, it's kind of like there's only one other person because you're in teams of two. And when you're rowing, you're with that person and then you swap switch and when you're resting you're also with that person so it's almost like doing it just two people me and another guy and you only see the other two guys for two seconds when you change teams every two hours to rest or row and it was certainly strange but perhaps in a weird way covid had helped prepare us for that or prepare me for that because we had been locked down on and off anyway so yeah but i still really struggled mentally physically actually the entire experience felt okay let's not say easy but it felt okay but mentally i really struggled um being so stuck out there and the waves are hitting you you're rowing through the night i couldn't sleep properly so yeah it was tough <laughs> very tough what did i miss most during these two months of course my partner ja in thailand i missed and I speak to my, my mom and my sister and my nephew and niece very regularly during my normal life, even when I'm traveling in Libya or Iraq or Afghanistan or whatever I'm doing, I speak to my family a lot, so I couldn't speak to them properly. And then of course, weirdly, I missed my business, my blog and my media stuff that I do. I really missed doing that. Um, and then I missed my friends and I, I missed exercising properly because when you're rowing, you only use like two or three muscles. So the other muscles that you don't use, they just disappear. Like I didn't take one step for two months. So my calf muscles disappeared, my biceps disappeared. And I don't mean from like, oh, how good you look. I don't mean like that. I mean like you had no muscles left. So now when I reach land and just walking felt like a, a leg workout in the gym. And now I'm starting to try to run again. It's so difficult because my muscles are gone and I'm gonna have to build them all back. So I really missed exercising properly. Um, and then of course the food, I had no fresh food, no fresh water, just eating dehydrated food for months also was quite tough. So your, your body's not getting the nutrients that it needs. Um, and then I missed sleep, of course. You only have two hours on, two hours off. During your two hours off, you have to prepare your food. You have to sort out all your injuries. So you maybe only get 30 minutes sleep every four hours for the entire, every four hours, 30 minutes sleep, four hours, 30 minutes sleep for the whole seven or eight weeks. So I really missed sleeping. And then most of all, I think I missed privacy. So even when you're sleeping, you're like shoulder to shoulder with the other guy. So it was very weird having no time to decompress and to think, you know, like I love, I'm quite a social guy, but equally at the end of the day, I like to close my door, turn on my air conditioning and think about life and, love and business and everything and clear my mind and I had no opportunity to do that so I really missed having my own space and, and personal free time. <clears throat> what was it like creating content in such circumstances? Did you keep up with the digital world? So it was obviously difficult to stay connected in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean but we did have a slow telegram, the app telegram connection so I could find out the Liverpool scores um, and see that make sure that all my loved ones were okay. So I did have that contact and actually I had my phone of course. So every day I wrote down how I was feeling, normally quite negative actually, because it was such an emotional experience. I made some videos about what I do day to day on the boat, what I eat day to day on the boat. You can see that all, all on my Facebook page actually, if you just scroll back a couple of pages. Um, yeah, for me the writing was quite an emotional experience because I could discuss what I was feeling and also I knew that when I finished the row, those intense emotions disappear. So 
uh, I think it's important to record them and remember how you felt because at the end when everything's okay you forget like how up and down you were so it's good to record that and then also like the little videos that I made about what I'm doing in a day rowing an ocean I think that's interesting for people who'll never do it and they want to see what's going on and also for people in the future who do want to do it it's interesting to see what they're going to sign up sign themselves up for so yeah and there's nothing else to do you're just rowing or resting so writing a little blog post and stuff kind of gives you something to do and to think about so it was okay would you do it again if yes what would you change would i do it again yes but on two conditions one i would do it in a, either solo or with one other person so either alone or in a team of two not in a team of four because there's no space and no privacy like i said uh, that'd be one condition and the second condition would be i'd only do it if i was challenging for a world record um, for any of the oceans so yes i would consider it for a world record and in a smaller team so i had i could work at my own pace and everything how are you de dealing with everything back in your social life? Did you ever feel overwhelmed with people or did you just get used to it right away? Whew, getting back to the real world has been tough because of COVID as well. Like, although I'm from Ireland, my family now live in England, but I personally live in Thailand and it's very difficult for me to go back to Thailand right now with quarantine and stuff. So from that, I, from the COVID perspective, it's difficult because I'm stuck here waiting for vaccines and, and all the rest before I go back to Thailand. Um, but in terms of how I'm dealing with it versus being isolated on the boat, um, it's actually great to be able to talk to people and touch people and, and feel normal again. And actually the first night that we landed in the Caribbean when we finished the row the last day, we ended up in Antigua. It was our finishing destination and we were partying. We landed kind of like midday and we were partying, drinking champagne and cocktails till about five in the morning, like talking to everyone we could talk to because we hadn't spoken to anyone for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I actually found that kind of okay. And if anything, because I'd been so isolated and it was so difficult mentally on the row, I was just happy to be back in civilization again. So. Um, I guess maybe people would think that you would struggle socially, but actually for me, it was like a massive relief to be able to talk to people again. So no, for me, it was great. I was delighted to be off the boat. And that's it really, yeah. Would I recommend it? I think if it's your dream to do something crazy or your dream to row an ocean, sure, knock yourself out. It's tough, especially mentally. But then I would say like, if you wanna do something really cool and you wanna sacrifice two, three, four months of your life, you want to spend ten or twenty thousand dollars because the road's quite expensive. I think climbing mountains and traveling around the world and volunteering and, and and doing something good like that is perhaps a better option to spend your time and money. But if you're crazy and you've done a lot of that stuff already and you want to do something pretty wild, and that's what I felt like, then sure, go and row an ocean. Uh, but don't tell me that I didn't warn you. Okay, that's it. Uh, this weekend. To help my recovery, I'm off to do something called the Three Peaks Challenge, which is the highest mountain in England, Scotland, and Wales, and you have to do it in 24 hours. So I'm leaving tomorrow to start that. I've signed up for my Everest expedition in um, March and April and May in 2023. So 20 months from now with a company called Furtenback Adventures. I'm off to climb the highest mountain in North America, Denali, uh, next summer. And with my non-profit, I have a charity that we utilize my, um, my following online, meditaadventures.com. We've got a school build in Thailand coming up and hopefully a few more projects next year as well. So things are slowly coming back together in the post-COVID world. But in the meantime, I've got to get back to my wife I'm building a house in Thailand, so I've got to focus on trying to make some money on the blog and get back to real life. Okay, thanks everyone. Miss you guys and see you soon. Take care.